This week on the Tech on Tap podcast, Cheyenne Shaha joins us to talk to us all about the newest updates to Astra Control. Welcome to the Tech on Tap podcast with Justin Parisi. I love NetApp. Oh, yeah. NetApp. I love this company. Zipar. Zipar. I love NetApp because it's so funny. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Tech on Tap podcast. My name is Justin Parisi. I'm here in the basement of my house and with me today I have Cheyenne Saha with me. So Cheyenne, what do you do here at NetApp and how do I reach you? Hey Justin, it's uh, it's great to talk to you after a while. I take care of NetApp's Astra portfolio, which is NetApp storage and data services, uh, which are Kubernetes centric. Um, Astra is our um, Kubernetes data and storage services. It has uh, It's a pretty vast portfolio. I'm the senior director of product management here. Um, been here for a couple of years. It's been a great ride so far. Uh, thanks, Justin, again for having me here for the podcast. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Um, so, you know, you're here to talk about Astra Control and the latest updates. But before we yeah. get into that, I would like for you to give me the overview of what is Astra Control. You know, the way I, I talk about Astra Control when customers, partners, and others ask me about is, uh, you know, uh, Astra Control provides you an advanced set of data services that you need for your enterprise-grade Kubernetes workloads that are stateful in nature. When I say stateful, that means uh, these applications actually have data and state that that matter. What we have seen with customers is, you know, a lot of people get started with Kubernetes very quickly uh, with stateless apps, API servers, and things like that. Uh, and even stateful applications where they start providing persistent storage to their workloads using a CSI interface, that's all nailed out. Right now, that's pretty well ironed and stable. However, uh, when it comes to actually providing, you know, uh, or protecting their applications or providing advanced data services like backup recovery, disaster recovery, cloning, migration, uh, that's where there's a gap. And uh, and uh, with Astra Control, we are filling that gap here at NetApp where we provide, uh, I'll say, a rich set of data services on top of, uh, you know, a persistent storage for Kubernetes, which is these days, you know, bread and butter. Uh, everybody does that. But uh, but but having the capability to, to basically have your workload disaster tolerant, um, you know, recoverable after a disaster, whether it's uh, in a local data center or in the cloud, uh, is is something that uh, we are solving here at NetApp with customer feedback. And uh, it's been a very exciting journey helping customers, uh, you know, basically do what they want to do with Kubernetes, such a powerful platform, really flexible, uh, and running their business critical apps on it, which have data. Uh, needing protection, needing to be mobile, needing to be portable. So, so in a, in short, Astra Control is our um, you know data services portfolio or data data services portfolio for Kubernetes. Uh, it does have two incarnations, um, two variants. Uh, I'd say one is a fully managed variant. We call it the Astra Control Service. This is a service operated by NetApp. Our customers can just add their Kubernetes clusters, and and uh, we discover the apps and and they can manage those apps and protect them. The, the apps they just can consume the service for other customers who have the need for running a self-managed software because of security or privacy reasons or data residency reasons. We have a variant called the Astra Control Center, which is just like any other traditional software uh, stack that you. It's a Kubernetes application itself. You take it in, uh, you run it. Uh, we provide releases, you update it, etc. So, so we have it in both forms available. And uh, we have customers that want both. It's a very rich portfolio that way. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you just want to use a service uh, and not worry, bother yourself with how to actually maintain uh, and patch software and upgrade software that is not core to your business, uh, then use a service. If you have a reason to, to kind of actually manage the software yourself or privacy or security or data residency regions, use the Astro Control Center variant. So that's uh, that's it. It was not a short explanation of what Astro Control Center it is, but but I, I hopefully that that clears it up for for folks who are hearing about it for the first time. Yeah, it sounds like it's mainly for for backup and disaster recovery, and even like moving workload data across different areas, whether yeah. it's on prem or cloud, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yes, that is correct. I mean, it's uh, it provides what uh, at least what what I call or what we call is you know application aware data protection, application aware data mobility. Uh, you know, and in Kubernetes, uh, being application aware is key because you could protect just the data volumes associated with your application, but that's not going to provide protection for the entire application. Similarly, if you just move the data volumes around from one cluster to another cluster or across to public cloud regions, it's not going to make the application actually portable. You have to move all of the components that make up a Kubernetes application that includes standard Kubernetes resources like secrets, config maps, replica sets, stateful sets, et cetera, along with custom resource, you know, custom resources and CRDs, which are cluster scope resources. So, so Kubernetes uh, applications can be pretty complex that way. They have uh, a lot of things that you, you need to move along or you need to w- operate on. And, and it's not just the data volumes that you protect or, or manage. That's the way to look at Astra Control and what it does for Kubernetes applications. So earlier you, you mentioned it being application aware, and I'm curious how it does that. Like, how does it know which application is which and how does it manage it? Astra Control is intelligent where, you know, basically it can go and discover all of your Kubernetes namespaces that are in a cluster uh, automatically. After that, um, you know, the customer can choose uh, which one they want to manage as an application. And then Astra would would absorb that uh, input and and basically provide customers um, you know a menu of all the options that they have for this application, whether it's backing it up, whether it's uh, taking a snapshot, whether it's cloning, etc. Um, Astra also um, you know is intelligent enough when it sees custom resources or CRs as they're known. Inside your uh, inside your namespaces, it can follow and figure out what are the cluster scoped uh, resources or the CRDs that are associated with your CRs and, and and also protect those. So it does that by you know by implementing logic, which is making sure that uh, you know all the things, all the Kubernetes resources that you have in a namespace are accounted for, along with things that could be referencing to that could be referenced. To, to as a cluster scope resources. In in addition to it, you know, if you want to, if the user wants to arbitrarily define an app, they can always use the concept of labels in Kubernetes by which they can actually apply uh, a label to a set of resources within a namespace and say, this is my app. Uh, or this is my app one, as opposed to another set of labels inside a namespace, which they call, this is my app two, and Astra will manage them both. And, and you'll be able to take a snapshot or backup of, of both, uh, you know, separately in a distinct way. So yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the whole of how App Astra deals with an application. It it, it actually uh, takes care and accounts for every resource that's in a namespace, follows back pointers to CRDs that are cluster scoped, and allows you to label things within a namespace that uh, you want to define as an app. So I would imagine that the only time you can take snapshots is when the underlying storage is NetApp storage. It doesn't really interact with other provisioners of the storage because we don't have those APIs. Is that is that accurate, or does it actually interact with other providers? Uh, it Astra started with interacting only with uh, NetApp storage, but that was uh, a while back. Uh, we got a lot of feedback from customers is they love what Astra has to offer, but they want the same data management that Astra provides for third-party storage. So Astra now does uh, support um, you know, cloud, uh, native cloud storage providers, including Azure Disks, Google Persistent Disk, and, uh, and uh, EBS. And in future, it will also support third-party on-prem storage, uh, which is the plan. So so Astra's goodness is not only limited to NetApp storage, though if you use NetApp storage, you will get super fast snapshots and other um, you know, snap mirror capabilities that, that you cannot use for those other storage providers. But Astra that way is all encompassing. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it is supporting <coughs> uh, storage providers from third party vendors that are non NetApp. So, so that's, uh, that's something that we added uh, based on customer requests, and it has been well received. 
Now you you kind of let the cat out of the bag here. Uh, you you talked about Snapmirror, and that's kind of mm-hmm. like the big uh, release for this update, right? So that's that's like the big feature that we we've, we've added. So talk to mm-hmm. me a little bit about that. Like, what was the driver for getting Snapmirror into Azure Control? Why was it so important? Yeah, so that's a that's a great question. So ever since we have launched Astra, you know, the the single most important request or the single most highest priority request that we have heard from our customers is, when will Astra support SnapMirror as the replication technology for uh, for doing disaster recovery? In, in other words, you know, uh, customers who who are used to using NetApp SnapMirror technology, they love it. Uh, they love how fast it is and efficient it is. They want to use it for Kubernetes. And, and in this latest update, um, we did just that. We delivered on that request. Um, Astra now integrates with SnapMirror so that you know one can basically do disaster recovery with very low RPO and RTO across data centers and the cloud. It's a very intuitive UI interface to set it up and support it. So it's uh, something that we are really proud about to deliver to the market. The other thing with uh, you know uh, SnapMirror is technology is this is in addition to what we did for you know so we already supported backup and restore using uh, an intermediary object storage medium so this is in addition to that so applications that have the need to have really low RPO can use SnapMirror but other applications which doesn't have that need can continue to use you know existing backup and restore. Uh, using intermediate object storage. So SnapMirror is additive, but it's a very exciting ad- addition for us. So with the SnapMirror addition, I would imagine you'd have to have the ability to talk to multiple storage systems, right, for, for both the replication establishment as well as updating. Um, does it support things like fan out and cascading of SnapMirror, or is it something just that's just like, you know, source to destination currently? Right now, it's also destination, but it does uh, it does support across on-prem data centers. We support it across as well as across the cloud and uh, and on-premises using CBO in the cloud and and on tap in on-premises. So it's not a new technology for NetApp, but bringing that under the Kubernetes uh, offering, uh, Astra offering, is new. As we get more requests from customers on enhancements, we will consider adding other capabilities to snap mirror as desired we think uh, are uh, based on our the initial responses we have got from customers uh, they're very excited to try it on to uh, try it and give us feedback so so it's already you know being better tested uh, even before its release it has been better tested by a group of customers so it's very exciting that uh, we have this uh, and this is very unique not a lot of competition can do this today uh, and uh, we think this is uh, going to be a killer feature for us I mentioned earlier about snapshots and third-party storage. Now, SnapMirror is mm-hmm. a different story. Um, that's mm-hmm. going to be pretty much proprietary to ONTAP. Do we support anything like SnapMirror to S3 where it goes to non-NetApp storage, or is that something that's on the roadmap? So SnapMirror uh, going into non-NetApp storage or SnapMirror going to NetApp storage is definitely on the roadmap. We do offer a way to do backup restore using using the object storage, intermediary object storage, which provides you with the same set of capabilities that you want. They may not, may not be as high, as low RPO, RPO uh, compared to SnapMirror, but the non-NetApp storage provider supported by Astra uh, will support the same set of functionality using the intermediary object storage. And, and a lot of customers actually are okay with not having that high RPO, RPO because their their application simply doesn't need it. Yeah, so I think we between SnapMirror and object storage, intermediate object storage for replication. I think we have got uh, a lot of applications covered. So as far as the SnapMirror piece goes, you know, in, in backups in general for Kubernetes storage, I would imagine that this is kind of a new, it's kind of new territory because, you know, uh, containers and that sort of thing were more ephemeral back in the day when they first came out. Now we're looking at more data sets that need to be protected and that sort of thing. So what sort of evolutions do you see coming in the future and you know what sort of workloads fit into that you know evolution where we had to go from not worrying about the data to actually caring so when kubernetes was first conceived or what was it first came into light it was you know in general it was being used for stateless applications by stateless i mean applications that have some config data but not more than that and and kubernetes thrived 
but Kubernetes is such a flexible and powerful platform that enterprises, you know, discovered it and said, we want to run our apps on this platform because that's kind of how our, you know, the the entire modern application modernization track is going to be. So as these happened, you know, people started, you know, doing uh, running workloads that include AI, AI ML uh, databases and data stores, you know, NoSQL data stores on Kubernetes. And these these kind of apps are very data heavy uh, or data centric. As more and more of these applications started coming into Kubernetes, the need for having some sort of solution that that makes them highly available, disaster tolerant, you know, started brewing. And uh, the Kubernetes community did a great job defining and and uh, the CSI interface for consuming storage in a very normalized fashion. But uh, when it came to data services beyond that, you know, the co- community is still working on some of the things that enterprises need. So other vendors are playing in this space and filling out this gap because when you have a lot of application data uh, in a platform. Uh, you want to sleep at night well, thinking that it's safe. And if something happens, you have a backup that you can restore from, or you can recover if there's a huge disaster. And that's why a solution like Astra is very relevant now, as more and more data-centric applications move to Kubernetes. Yeah, and, and speaking of the sleep at night and, and feeling secure with your data, the SnapMirror piece itself is actually pretty secure. You know, For one thing, you're you're not transmitting all the data every time, right? It's just parts of the data that have yeah. changed. And it's done so with a proprietary technology that's going to be pretty hard to kind of translate what's coming across the wire. Even mm-hmm. so, you've got the TLS 1.2 encryption to protect that anyway. So so now you've kind of got this you know, security through obfuscation and then security through encryption. So you've got a, a pretty good peace of mind when you're dealing with replicating these data sets across the wire. That is correct. And customers and enterprises want that, right? So so that's why Snap Mirror integration has been our number one requested feature from day one uh, that we launched the project. And now that it's real, you know, uh, we are we are really excited to bring this to the market. And it's truly one of its kind. Our competitors who have similar solutions are not there yet with, with this kind of integration. So we are very happy about it. And we think it's going to you know, take Kubernetes, you know, stateful Kubernetes workloads, you know, provide stateful Kubernetes a, a new level of disaster tolerance and business continuity that people haven't seen before in this space. Yeah. And aside from the disaster recovery piece, I mean, SnapMirror also offers the ability to give you the, you know, chance to localize data sets. So if you want to have a local copy of data to another location. You can do a replication over there and you have that there now. It can be read only if you want. So you leave the snap mirror intact so nobody can touch that data. Um, you can also use it for migrations, right? You want to go from one cloud to another, snap mirror is going to be able to do that for you as well. That is correct. Yes. So yes, it brings in a host of other features that so far the Kubernetes community, uh, not community, but, but the Kubernetes users haven't been offered. So indeed. Yeah, and I think it's very important that they know it's available now because, I mean, they're, they're used to working in this space where there's just like, there's no mobility, there's no backup. Now you have mm-hmm. these options. Right, and all of that is brought by Astra in an application-centric manner. So so you, you do this application by application as opposed to just a data volume. So that makes it even more powerful. So when you say it's application-centric and, and you mentioned it's not just a data volume... Is it smart enough to grab data sets within a single volume or has it got to be the whole volume? The current integration is basically, if you look at a Kubernetes application, you know, it can have one or more persistent volumes, you know, and each of those volumes could have snap mirror sessions going to the other one. And uh, the way, you know, Astra makes sure that they are, you know, they, they're snapshotted together and they're replicated together, providing application consistent snapshots and replication. So all of that is orchestrated by Astra as opposed to the user needing to do that. Yeah, and the good news is, is we have things like Trident to provision volumes in those in those spaces, right? So you can automatically provision volumes and not have to worry so much about doing it yourself. So so tying in right. Trident into that is going to be important. Yeah, and it's all all of this is actually Trident plays a major role in all of this. Trident is used for plumbing. Trident enables dynamic. Uh, persistent volume uh, allocation from storage classes. 
and Astra basically provides the the end to end user experience where you can actually take an application and say, I want this to be replicated, you know, including all of its data to the other cluster. And if there's a DR, you know, I want that application to be restored, including all the data volumes and the Kubernetes objects that make up the application so that the application is instantly operable after a disaster. So you don't have to go and say, oh, I, I recovered all the data, but where is where are my secrets? Oh, but where are my config maps? But where are my stateful sets? All of that is tied together nicely so that you have it ready. Yeah, and when you're dealing with a large Kubernetes deployment, you don't want to really worry about all this moving parts. So if you have something that can orchestrate all that for you, it's going to make your life a lot easier and it's going to reduce the amount of mistakes you make when you're doing something as important as disaster recovery and backup. That is true. And that's why the whole application aware aspect of this tied with snap mirror and you know the replication and the fast and efficient replication mechanisms uh, they all come very nicely together to work together and help kubernetes applications achieve the business continuity that was missing so far all right so we we've talked a lot about the snap mirror aspect and i don't want to make it seem like that's the only thing that's in the new update mm-hmm. so let's talk more about what else is available in this update so what else is new there's a lot of interesting updates here, but uh, the most important uh, update outside of Snap Mirror is another feature that I don't say feature, but it's, a, it's more than just a feature that our customers have been asking for is AWS support. So we now support Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service, uh, EKS, which means that if you are running your Kubernetes workloads on EKS, or you can protect them with Astra. As long as your storage provider is either EBS, again, uh, speaking to a third-party storage support, or FSx NetApp for ONTAP. So, so we're, we're out of the gate. We are, going, we are supporting both FSx NetApp for ONTAP and EBS. So EBS and FSx uh, NetApp for ONTAP are popular storage providers for containerized workloads. So as long as your containerized applications are using those, uh, we can protect them and we can, you can easily move them. So all of the Astra features that are available for other public cloud and, uh, and on-premises are now available for AWS EKS users. Are there other Kubernetes orchestrations that are available in addition to that already? Or you know, is, there, is that still to come in later releases? So we already support, if you ran you know, something like OpenShift or Rancher in AWS and wanted Astra to provide data services for applications running on those clusters. We kind of already supported that through our Astra Control Center variant of the product, which is self-managed. But EKS is is Amazon's fully managed Kubernetes service that is now integrated tightly with our Astra Control service, which is our fully managed offering, providing very seamless usage and uh, a really enhanced user experience where you just click buttons and set things up. And then, you know, once it's up, you know, things are discovered and and you can go with that. This was not the case before. We did not support EKS with EBS and FSX and on, for ONTAP before that. So this is truly a new new addition, which again, uh, a lot of our customers have, have asked for. And what about things like AKS or GKE? Or do, we, do we support those with Azure Control Center as well, or is that on the roadmap? Yeah, AKS and GKE are supported already. So Azure Control Service, which is our fully managed version, supports them. We launched Astra Control Service with GKE, and we added support for AKS in Azure. The storage providers that we support for those include Google Persistent Disk and CVS in Google Cloud, and Azure NetApp Files and Azure Disk in Azure. So the AWS is a new addition to our already supported uh, Google and Azure. So are there even any engines that we don't support now? I mean, I I feel like that's all the major ones. Are there any that we're missing? I think between Astra Control Service and Astra Control Center, I would say we have support for all popular Kubernetes platforms. So this includes, obviously, AKS, GKE, EKS, VMware, Tanzu, OpenShift, by Red Hat, and Rancher. We obviously support community Kubernetes, so upstream Kubernetes if you download. So between those seven or eight Kubernetes platforms, I think we have got the most popular platforms covered. All right. So, um, you know, you mentioned, we mentioned Azure a little bit in, in the AKS piece. Is there mm-hmm. anything that we're doing new with Azure in the marketplace? Yeah. For the first time, Astra Control Service is now available in the Azure marketplace for procurement. So that's something that we added in this update. So you can now buy Astra Control directly from the marketplace. This was not possible before. 
So it makes for a much more frictionless buying experience. So, so we're very excited about that. In addition to that, in this release, I just want to mention that we have this concept of execution hooks in the product or the service, which helps you to kind of quiz and quiz databases and things like that. Uh, we have had those hooks only for snapshotting so that you know one can take application consistent snapshots. Uh, but now we enhance that framework to add that extensibility or hook, hook capability for backup and restore operations, right? So now we have more comprehensive. So this allows you to basically go and, you know, specify custom actions uh, in form of a script or something that you want to do when when you try to take a backup of a database. So to add more to this, we did more than, than just, you know, enhance the execution hooks to and expanded the, their usage to, uh, to backup and restore actions. We actually launched an open source project which provides additional tooling for cloud native, very popular cloud native applications. So, so if you're looking to protect applications like, you know, Cassandra, Elasticsearch, MariaDB, MySQL, MongoDB, PostgreSQL, uh, PG SQL, but Redis uh, and Kafka, we have actually launched an open source project which has custom actions that you would want to take uh, in in conjunction with Astra Control to protect them. This this open source project is called Verda, spelled V E R D A, and we have launched it with all the applications I talked about. The protection policy for all of these applications is not a hook or a script. It could be something else that you need to do. And we have tried to document all such steps. And our plan is to kind of curate this test and, and continue growing this uh, Verda project so that we can get, you know, for lack of a better word, recipes for protecting popular cloud na native applications as they show up because every application is different. They need to do something else. When it comes to a database or a data store, it could be quiesing and unquiesing or freezing and unfreezing, but that's not the case with something like Kafka or Jenkins. So our approach is to kind of keep expanding this project and provide custom actions for popular cloud native applications so that customers can use that as a reference when they go and adopt one of these cloud native applications and, and want to protect them. Does this project integrate with things that people might be using today, such as like Puppet or Ansible, that sort of thing, or is it its own standalone thing? Uh, it's currently a standalone thing, but uh, what we have on the roadmap is to make it extremely easy from Astra Control to basically populate its... Uh, Astra Control already has a framework for execution hooks that I talked about, and it will make it extremely easy and will make it extremely easy to choose your execution hooks or select your execution hooks or scripts from this repository of hooks so that you don't have to kind of, you know, download a hook and upload, et cetera. So we will make it uh, very automated and seamless. So, so customers can just say, oh, I want an execution hook for MariaDB. Nadal has this word, the project, you know, I can pick it up from here and, uh, and I can apply it. So that's kind of what the plan is currently. So we'll see how it goes. So I, I want to go back and touch a little bit about the Azure Marketplace because I don't think you, you quite... Um, made mm -hmm. everyone made everyone feel like how how important and how big it is to get into the Azure marketplace cuz from my from what I understand it's hard to get into mm -hmm. that <laughs> it's a very exclusive club so it, how how long would you say we've been working on that yeah so that's actually uh, thanks uh, Justin for kind of giving me an opportunity to address that yes so we have been working on it for the actual technical work you know four months whatever to get all the APIs integrated but but there's a whole biz dev phase before that where you kind of have to convince Microsoft on why we want to do this, what is in it for them, what is in it for us. And that takes a long time. So being in the marketplace is valuable. It's a lot more visibility. Anybody who's coming to the Azure marketplace and looking for a Kubernetes application protection and mobility solution now will have an, another option. But it took a while to make it happen. But I think our engineering team, you know, they did a great job uh, rising up to the occasion getting all of the integration done, which includes billing integration. A lot of work in the product went in. That is not necessarily any core product feature, but you know, end-to-end -end workflows on how somebody will come to the Azure marketplace and, and consume Astra from there and get set up with a subscription and uh, get start getting charged. So there's a lot of uh, thought that went in into how those workflows would work out. And it really just underscores the partnership that NetApp has with cloud providers like <laughs> Azure, right? I mean, it's just huge. Yes. 
Yeah, that is true. I mean, NetApps uh, that way is in a unique position. It has great relationships and partnerships with all the three you know major public clouds out there. And working in NetApp, we closely collaborate with you know all of them, and it's great to see this collaboration take root in various products within and across NetApp, across the breadth and the depth of the portfolio. And this is not something. This is not easy, as you said before, right? It it takes time, years to work these partnerships to the point where you are a trusted partner and work with these public cloud giants or, or hyperscalers for years, where they trust you and give you, you know, some of this, let's say, things that are not easy to get. You know, you have to earn their trust and and be a great partner to be able to get some of these. So indeed, you know, this is uh, this is pretty unique about here at NetApp where it has got such a great relationship with all three hyperscalers. We've covered SnapMirror. Um, we've covered mm. the Azure Marketplace. Mm. We've covered Project Verta. Um, so mm. what else is there in the new update? Is there anything else that we need to know about? Yeah, sure. We talked about the AWS EKS integration so oh, yeah, earlier on. So, <laughs> yeah, so that one too. And uh, I think... Uh, Yes, there are, there's always other small things that we worked on, made the UI much more usable. It has a dark mode now. There's another interesting feature in the UI where when you're taking a backup, um, you know, it actually shows you the percent completion, like how far you have backed up. So you have a good idea how much of the backup has been done and how much uh, is still remaining. The same applies to restore. So so there's a lot of those kind of things that have gone in, which is like makes the user experience really good. And we are continuously kind of striving to make, make the user experience even better. You know, so I think our UX team did a great job polishing the interface and, and get it, getting it more intuitive. And we get kudos from our customers all the time about you know how, how great the UI is and how intuitive it is and uh, how they didn't have to type 25 commands in a command line <laughs> to get a DR session going across two namespaces, right? So that is something that is very unique to Astra. It's extremely intuitive. You don't have to be Kubernetes savvy to use it. If you kind of know around to Kubernetes a little bit, you'll be able to use it. It it, it abstracts out all those details that makes Kubernetes very sometimes scary. But here with Astra, you can. You know, obviously Astra has the expert API mode, so you can obviously you know code up all the workflows you want that you want to invoke before a disaster, after a disaster, you know, things like that. But for somebody who is not so Kubernetes savvy and has limited experience, Astra is not difficult. You know, it's it's extremely easy to use. It's intuitive. You go to the console and things are laid out very nicely. You can have a look at it and and mostly, you know, understand what the portal is showing, et cetera. Because we understand that overall, you know, Kubernetes application data can be very daunting for people to grok. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there's a lot more they have to worry about than just trying to figure out how to navigate yet another right. portal. Sounds like we've covered pretty much everything there is, uh, you know, outside of the small things that, you know, maybe aren't as important to cover. But um, if, if I wanted to find more information about the new Azure Control release, where would I find mm. that? Our portal is uh, cloud.netapp.com slash Astra dash control. Again, it's cloud.netapp.com slash Astra dash control from there you know you can you can actually sign up and start using Astra right away with the free trial or you can read up on the blogs you know you can read up on on the reference architectures and other materials that we have on it you can look up customer references so so there's a lot of things that's going on there so that's your starting point from then on you know obviously you can branch off into different parts but we always try to keep that fresh there's a lot of great blog content there we're constantly making sure that you know every new feature that we introduce we we put in videos we uh, demo videos we put in blogs uh, and a lot of those things yeah and we'll, we'll also have another podcast covering uh the, the astro control piece with you know a customer angle uh coming up in, mm-hmm. the, in the coming weeks so st- mm-hmm. stay tuned to that space here and we'll add all these links to the blog as well um so is there anything else you want to add before we head out so it was great speaking here, Justin. So as always, you know, um, I think for folks who are listening to this podcast, please give the latest update of Astra a try and check out our Snap Mirror capabilities or AWS capabilities, depending upon uh, if you're using Astra Control Service or Astra Control Center and give us feedback because we'd like to hear from them. All right. And the, the feedback portion is also in the portal as well? 
Yeah, so if you if you are using Astra Control Service, you should be able to just go when you're the free version, you'll be able to create support tickets or we have Slack channels or Discord channels that you can use to give us feedback, which we actually respond to pretty quickly. So even though you may be just trying it out and not uh, a paying customer, we take all of the feedback very seriously. Well, Cheyenne, thanks so much for joining us today and uh, talking to us all about the new Azure Control updates. Again, if we wanted to reach you, how do we do that? My email address is cheyennes at netapp.com. Uh, it's S-A-Y-A-N-S at netapp.com. I'm also on LinkedIn, so you can message me on LinkedIn. Uh, thank you again, Justin. Uh, yep. It was great. Yep, thank you. And uh, again, we'll, we'll include these contact informations in the blog. Oh! Right, that music tells me it's time to go. If you'd like to get in touch with us, send us an email to podcast at netapp.com or send us a tweet at netapp. As always, if you'd like to subscribe, find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or via techontappodcast.com. If you like the show today, leave us a review. On behalf of the entire Tech on Tap podcast team, I'd like to thank Cheyenne Shaw for joining us today. As always, thanks for listening. Oh, yeah. Is it just me that's getting off on this? Oh, yeah.